lying and stealing our next door neighbors or roommates. If you like true revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. In this episode, we start off with a deadbeat thieving roommate who gets evicted without mercy, followed by a thieving roommate who shamelessly steals hard-earned tips and loses his future because of it. Lastly, a crooked roommate trying to live rent-free, but ends up paying more than she bargained for. Before we start, be sure to bring the like button at Dunkin' Donuts box, but fill it with vegetables. Let's dive in. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts might be disturbing to snowflakes. I've been thinking about whether to share this or not for a while now, but I decided to share my bad roommate story. This isn't a fake story I can assure you, I have to add this dragged over a number of months. I've known Amber for a number of years and we had a good friendship, up until a year ago. I was a hormonal young woman that wanted to have her own space and Amber felt the same, so we put our money together and rented a flat. When I say our money, I mean 70% mine and 30% hers. I didn't have a problem with it at first, because I was just glad to not have my mum in my ear 24-7. I even paid for all the furniture in the flat, just for everything to be broken, ripped or messed up with food and cigarette butts, but that comes later. I had a boyfriend, Dexter, stay with me in my room and it was amazing, and Amber had Chad stay with her. Now Dexter and I live in our own flat in a different city, because Dudu hit the fan in more ways than one. Now I don't have a friend, but I'm better off that way because she proved to be anything but a friend. At the beginning of this all, Amber and I opened a joint account for bills and kept our separate accounts, so bills didn't fall on one person. We scheduled the payment in a way that it was possible to pay on time. But even though this worked, I came to find a few months later, that Amber took money out of the account, leaving it with insufficient funds. This led to unpaid bills and calls coming through to me from companies chasing their money. When I confronted Amber about it, she said she needed to travel, but I knew it was going to drugs for Amber and her boyfriend Chad. I should have known better and nipped it in the bud there and then, but I was naive. After the confrontation and showing her that I know she has been taking money out of our account for months now, she starts begging me for money. She said she only needed it now and would pay it all back to me. I decided to lend her some money. Amber paid nothing towards food shopping, but Amber and Chad ate every last thing. If money wasn't an issue, cleanliness was for sure. Plates, cups and pots left all over the kitchen and I was mismade expected to clean everything, which I did because I have OCD and can't stand mess. When I finally put my foot down, Amber told me that Dexter left plates on the side too. Dexter laughed and told Amber that his plates were on the side overnight, hers were there for six days. Amber still took the piss and never cleaned up unless I said anything, like I was her nagging mother. After that, Chad waited until Dexter left the flat to go to the shop. When we were alone, he started to come towards me and shout at me, telling me to sort myself out before he does. He proceeds to throw empty threats at me, not realizing I was on the phone with Dexter and he was on his way back. When Chad heard Dexter was at the door, he panicked and fled before Dexter could see him. He made sure to call me a skank before running away like a scared kitty cat, because he's scared of Dexter. I must add Dexter is a big friendly giant, unfortunately the situation did not get resolved after this. One day, Amber and Chad went away without a word and Amber had taken things from my room, my hair straightener, jumper and brush, so I went into their room to retrieve them. The smell that hit my nose when I opened the door hit me with such intensity, that I became fueled with anger and decided I had enough of it. I immediately got on the phone with the landlord. The landlord came over the next day while Amber and Chad were still out. He saw the state that Amber left the flat in and he was shocked. He was so livid he swore he would act on it and apologize to me for the situation, he was sweet. He said he wanted to issue her a notice to leave the flat and gave me permission to stay. Although I was thankful of his generous offer, I didn't want to stay where I felt such bad energy. Before he issued the notice, I called Dexter and asked him to arrange a removal van while I contact a storage company to rent a locker. I then dismantled and packed the furniture from the kitchen, bathroom and living room, packed up the van and kept my own belongings safe, 
God knows Amber would have stolen them. When Amber and Chad got back, Amber saw the notice and my furniture was gone, she got so mad she stormed out. The notice had mentioned that the cleanliness of the flat was disgusting, the loud music had been reported by neighbors, they had a boombox playing at antisocial hours, and smoking in the flat was not allowed, which Amber knew before signing the agreement. Amber never spoke a word to me after the notice was served and left the flat before the two months was up. The dumbasses left her bedroom windows open and tried to sneak in later that evening, but I shut them and made sure they were locked with the new key. The door key was changed by the landlord immediately after Amber and Chad left. Dexter and I stayed about a month to make sure the flat was presentable to new tenants before we moved on. We now live in a much nicer area and are trying for our first baby. Oh, Amber and Chad broke up, I heard through the grapevine. Amber burned every last bridge with her family and even called Dexter for money. Thankfully he didn't help her. We haven't heard a word from her since and I couldn't be happier to be rid of that leech. This was about two years ago in college. I had just moved into a house off campus with three of my closest friends. There were two other college guys already living there. All of these guys were doing Air Force ROTC with me, basically you go into the military after you graduate. I really liked all of my roommates in the house. Except for one of the dudes that was already living there. He had a dog that would constant rip up, pee, poo on the carpet and he wouldn't clean it up. He seriously wouldn't clean it up. Furthermore, he would yell at us for leaving dirty dishes in the sink while he was the one making the vast majority of the mess. I had a job working 30 hours a week, doing school full time and doing ROTC. I had a job as a server, so I would make quite a lot of tips, around $300 a week. I would leave the cash in my room boxed up, because I trusted everyone in the house. We were all going to join the military and integrity is a big thing. So I go to deposit my tips in the bank after not going for about a month. I'm shocked when my cash deposit is only about $200 when I knew it had to be at least $1,200. At this point I knew someone was stealing my tips. It then made sense, because my deposits had seemed a little low for a while. I was furious, because I was barely scraping by working my ass off trying to pay for college. So I buy a security camera for my room and hide it. I get all the documents from my work regarding the tips I've made over the past few months. I continue leaving my tips in the box unconcealed as bait. I don't tell any of my roommates this. Sure enough, I leave for a trip and I get a notification on my phone. I watch as this mofo that I trusted steals about $300 in cash from me, taking only $20 bills so I wouldn't notice. Well, the next day back from the trip I schedule a meeting with our ROTC commander. I bring him all the evidence and video footage and tell him about my awful experiences with him in my house with my other roommates as witnesses. Long story shorter, he got kicked out of ROTC and ruined his career. He had to pay me back about $1,000, in monthly payments, and had to pay the military back about $9,000, he had been getting paid by them for about a year. In addition, we go to an expensive school and he chose a useless major, so he is stacked high in student debt with no real way out. And finally, he had just quit his job because he thought he could get away with stealing from me and watching TV at home. Let me sprinkle some more joy, he had just crashed his dream car he'd been working on for a while, because he drives like an loony. I still see him every so often on campus and smile at him. I moved into a four-bedroom university house with two of my housemates, who I knew personally. Let's call them Abby and Ben. Due to unfortunate circumstances, our previously planned housemate didn't come to live with us, so we found a new one named Chloe. Chloe was a horrible housemate from the start. This became apparent when she never paid any bills or rent on time, smoked like a chimney inside, against our agreement. Leaves home for a few days leaving a big pile of dishes for us to do, including our pots and pans. She screamed extremely loud when gaming on her laptop, all the way till 5 a.m. I have to add our walls are very thin. Just to name a few things, basically she sucked. So it gets till about 4 months in, at this point we can't stand Chloe anymore. So have a house meeting. 
we basically sat there and try to explain how we would prefer she stop screaming at their laptop until 5 am every night, as all of us get up early. Everything we bring up gets denied by Chloe. Each of us lent Chloe a month's rent and some bills to keep up with the payments, but Chloe didn't pay any of us back. Summed up together, this was around $1,000. When we would ask for our money back, Chloe would deny it saying, I don't owe you anything. This made me, Abby and Ben pretty pissed. Forward to a few weeks later, Abby Ben and I invited some friends over for pre-drinks. We did so with the permission of Chloe, she said she didn't mind considering she wouldn't be home that night. Turns out she finished work early, so she came home and was shocked to find people there and went up to her room. She was agitated and kept coming down to turn the music down, even though it wasn't loud in the first place. Chloe got so angry. She threw my speaker out the window. I didn't see Chloe do it, but people who saw it told me so. I had enough. I went to retrieve my speaker, but Chloe came with me to my surprise. And as we walked outside, Chloe went straight to my car that was parked on the driveway. I remember this moment vividly, she actually keyed my car. I saw this while I was picking up my speaker. I started yelling at her while she walked off to get away. Luckily we have an automatic light on the side of the house and a car was driving down my road at the time. The driver said they had a dash cam and probably caught her keying my car. I still stood there in disbelief and gave him my email address. I refused to let this incident ruin my night, say I went about my night enjoying the party. When it was time to leave, a lot of us hadn't finished our alcohol, so we left it on the kitchen table and left. When we got back the next day and had sobered up in the morning, we found all the alcohol had been taken, along with the speaker, some headphones and my laptop. Now I was really pissed. There was no way she would get away with this. I logged into my housemate's laptop on my email and saw the miracle driver had pulled through. He sent me a small clip of Chloe keying the car along with several close-ups, showing the key in contact with the car. I first confronted Chloe, asking if she knew where my stuff was while Abby and Ben secretly recorded on their phones. Things got heated and it looked like she was going to fight me. I am a big guy, 6 foot 4, and I'm really not scared. I am basically just pissing Chloe off. Chloe then swung her fists at me a few times. Making contact while I didn't fight back. I put my hands and arms over my head and face. Chloe then stomps off thinking she won. Let me remind you, Abby and Ben were recording. I call the police. They show up, I basically say I have good reason to believe Chloe stole my alcohol and other possessions. They go up and knock on Chloe's door, but all they receive was, go away. They can't go in without a search warrant. So I filed a report about the assault and the things stolen. The police were very nice and basically tell me how to fill it in. They came back the next day with a warrant for Chloe's arrest for assault and battery. They searched her room and find all the stolen alcohol bottles, my headphones, which clearly were mine as they only paired with my phone, my laptop and damaged speaker. I sued Chloe. And one. I had indisputable evidence along with witnesses for all the events. I got $3,000 for damages on my car, speaker and the rent Chloe owed us three. The judge then added an additional $5,000 and gave her the option to pay it in smaller monthly payments. Chloe went to prison for resisting arrest, assaulting a police officer, yes you heard that right. Add assault, destruction of property and theft and battery. Chloe still had to pay rent for her room until the lease ended, so we used her room as a gym. Thank you for enjoying this episode, which was made with artificial love. Subscribe or give Royal AI some sugar by avenging the like button. Could you imagine doing one of these acts yourself? Share your experience below. I'll join the conversation.